in their own words, is a tribute to the founding families who helped give their children an opportunity to live and work in their community. The year 1967. There were no programs that taught work skills to adult retarded persons. All ages attended schools for small children. Parents of retarded adults and professionals in the field of retardation set up a research committee to meet and discuss how to help the older person with mental retardation. After three months, they drafted a plan. A workshop, work activity center for retarded people over 16 years old was needed. A place to learn skills during the day. A board of directors was formed from this group, along with representatives from the community who knew fundraising, public relations, and organizing volunteers. The board incorporated itself and began to do business. This excerpt comes from We Have Been There, a book capturing the stories of the families who came together to give their children with disabilities the chance to go to school in the community where they lived. Here is the story of Columbus Community Center and the families who started it in their own words. We are coming to a wonderful time in uh, the history of Columbus Community Center. Next year we'll be celebrating our 40th anniversary. As, as we met uh, other parents, we formed our own groups and then we would go sit in and uh, watch how uh, the legislators would vote. So this is how parents and guardians advocated for our kids early in, during those early days. Donna Adams' son, Ronald, was one of eight children who started school at Columbus on June 8, 1968. School age arrived and we realized that Patty had a problem. How bad it was, we did not guess until her teacher gently suggested that Patty simply could not cope with public kindergarten. One memorable day, we were called to a meeting with the city school psychologist, the social worker, and the principal. You must get your daughter out of school tomorrow, said the principal. I began to cry, since I knew of no place left to send her. Mrs. Lund, said the all-knowing social worker, I sense you are becoming emotionally involved. Fortunately, my husband was there. I'd consider her a hell of a mother if she weren't emotionally involved. I also know that we have rights as taxpayers. We refuse to withdraw our daughter from the public school system until there is an appropriate alternative for her. That was a prophetic statement. The common story among these families was their determination to change the world so their children had opportunities to live and succeed in their communities. Every parent brought individual contributions to the table and collectively they started to see a difference. We got a very special gift, we in the field of mental retardation or siblings or parents and that came in the form of Jerry Clark. Jerry got a job at the school district. Uh, the state school district, and she started working from the inside, realizing that these kids, actually these adults, needed a place to go. The ARC had already formed the daycare centers, and now these children were growing up and becoming adults. And once the daycare centers were uh, turning them out at 18, they had nowhere to go but back home. And she thought, there has to be sheltered workshops, there has to be a way for them to become functioning adults, tax-paying adults, instead of tax burdens. After 40 years, the spirit of the determined families still lives on at Columbus and in our community. The hope of these founding families is that they have made a difference for the next generation to come. The question was, how do you get from day to day as a young parent and try to help the community help you? And it seems to me that we are seeing a turn in this country. Uh, Roland Hall School, for example, has a community service program and uh, the kids are required to find a volunteer job uh, or program. And the ones I just heard about today at lunch are uh, the, a bunch of kids has decided that they want to become helpers for to give parents of autistic children a couple of hours a day respite and these kids will go in and, and tend. So I think 
That's happening more and more, and I think the press, the use of the press is vital. If you can get uh, newspaper columnists and uh, television personalities and uh, feature article writers to write about the problem, I'm absolutely convinced. I know who we are as Americans, and we want to help. So go get it. Call your reporter. They'll come. Never Give Up by Donna Anderson. How do you get services? I guess the one word that says it best is determination. Never give up. Join any group that can give you political clout. Always stand up for the rights of your child and for your own rights as his parent. Don't accept the cop-out of hysterical parent or not well-educated or no money. Inform yourself. You cannot depend on anyone else to do it for you. And don't forget this. Try to find some time to enjoy life, if only 15 minutes a day when you don't have to face any problems. Take a bubble bath. 